So remember when we checked out the ASUS WRX80 Sage Wi-Fi motherboard and I said this over here I think is probably the mother of all motherboards. Well, wait till you see this and then you realize goodness me I don't know what the heck does this motherboard do because everything's a lot different like very very different for example it uses CPUs like this one over here this is the Intel Xeon 3475X this costs more than four thousand dollars and that's not even the highest end model but one thing is for sure the sponsor of this video. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Now I'm gonna make the review of this uh, CPU a bit later and it was shipped on a little packet like that so i'm gonna put it back inside here but i thought it's interesting to check out the motherboard first because wow i read the whole manual pretty much and i was like wow i thought i knew about motherboards so what is this motherboard this is the asus pro ws w70e if you remember the z790 so this is the w790e sage sc workstation motherboard when you buy some pro equipment from asus whether it's pro art or some of the pro motherboards you're gonna get three months for free adobe cloud membership which if you're already using this is quite a lot of money that you're gonna save so let's open up see what's in the box on top of the cover is this thing which i'm gonna show you what it does later on then we've got the motherboard Alrighty, let's put that on the side Smells a bit like fish. We've got the user manual, some more literature, safety information, web storage, and then underneath on this side, we have some CPU brackets, a thermal center. Then you've got two rubber little washers or feet or nubbins. I'm not sure quite what that for. M.2 standoff little square, if you've got the NAND only on the top side of the NVMe, then the standoff is kind of too low, so you're going to put that sticker on there. We've got one screw for the uh, probably M.2. We've got the front panel header converter, so you can basically put all the front panel headers on this and then plug the whole thing into the motherboard. And then we've got some SATA cables. Not a lot of interesting things. In fact, we didn't even get the M.2 expansion card, what you got with the WRX80 board. So these things here are basically like brackets for the CPU installation. I'm going to have to make a complete other installation guide how to install these CPUs because you install the CPU to the cooler and then the cooler to the motherboard, which is a lot different than what you what you used to. Here's the motherboard. Back of the motherboard has this uh, metal backplate. Pro series. The back of the CPU socket is completely covered, so you can't really damage any of the back of the CPU cover, which is very, very nice. No sockets or nothing underneath the back, but there's still a lot of different SMDs and capacitors and things, so I'm still careful with the back of the motherboard. There's a whole lot of things that are different than what you usually see. And let's start with the main things here. First of all, the CPU socket. This is the LGA4677 CPU socket. And this cover comes off if you just undo these nuts over here. They're little plastic nuts. They come off and then this cover just comes off and then boom, the CPU socket is in there. Like a Threadripper CPU installation is much more easier than this here. But perhaps it's just so that you can have even pressure on the CPU socket and you wouldn't have any problems with like losing some of the memory channels or some of the PCI expansion, PCI slots or something like that just because uh, your CPU doesn't make a perfect contact with all of these thousands of pins that are inside the CPU socket. Secondly, we're going to talk about the RAM here, okay? So you can see, first of all, there's like this uh, little be aware sticker basically about dual PSUs, which we're going to talk about in a moment. There is eight DIMM channels and eight slots. So these 
CPUs are eight channel memory, which is the W34 series CPUs. There's W24 series as well, which are like lower end of the fourth gen Xeon processors. But when you go with the W24 series um, Xeon processors, you're gonna lose quite a lot of the expansion slots, M.2 slots, bandwidth, all sorts of things. And the core count is a little bit lower. But when you go with the likes of the higher end 34 series, then you get the full like features and everything. And then you also get eight channel memory and eight dim slots all of them work but these are not just your usual ddr5 slots because when you try to take your usual like consumer ddr5 whether it's kingston you know just the normal pc ddr5 check out what happens this is kingston fury beasts okay and then it will go in the slot there but can you see the notches in a different place and it doesn't matter whether you go one way or the other way it doesn't line up and it doesn't go inside the socket so then you might be asking what type of ddr5 ram does this motherboard even take then well i'm glad you asked or i'm gonna tell you anyway there's something called an rdim and this motherboard the sample came with two packs of these okay and these are four kits which means that finally they have a ddr5 kind of section where there's a kit of four that you can get which gives us hope that there's going to be soon a four kit ddr5 um kits available for like consumer platforms as well so we can get 128 gigabytes with xmp even more now because we have more capacity bear dim than just 32 gigabytes but basically these are r dims and the r dim main difference with the consumer ram is basically it's it's built for server platform and it just works slightly differently but the consumer platform ram that you have there works at five volts okay the five volt input comes to there and then that's how it gets the you know power for it but these server ones they work on a 12 volt voltage so they're completely different so if you put one to the other one would fry the other basically and that's why you can't put the consumer usual pc ram inside here but you can do with these these are kingston fury renegade pro ddr5 r dim and then these guys slot in absolutely perfectly as you can see but this ram is very expensive like very very expensive this is 128 gigabytes altogether so there's two 64 gigabyte kits and if i'm not mistaken that costs about three grand. So the CPU and RAM on its own here is, is about seven grand. Yikes. Now this is bleeding edge technology and server, come on, come out now, uh, boards with the new Xeon platform and we don't have a, a Threadripper Pro 7000 series yet which means that this is the only platform that supports this DDR5 and that's why this DDR5 is very, very expensive. I expect this to cut in half probably. Once we have a great supply and different platforms that support this, then we've got a bigger demand and then this will go the cheaper as well. Which is a funny way of saying, because usually more demand, higher price, but right now, because it's such a niche thing, and we've got a very high price RAM here. But the motherboard supports up to two terabytes of DDR. Five, which is nothing else that you can see out there now let's start working through the different motherboard headers as we go around because there's a lot of different interesting things going on so first of all on the top there there is some fan headers you've got water pump headers and cpu optional and cpu fan headers and then as we go around you can see some more one more over here we've got two on the bottom here another one over here and another one over there but the interesting thing is usually you see these cpu or pwm headers support up to 24 watts which means they're two amperes you know two amperes 12 volts you'll get 24 watts but these are three amperes so all of them support up to 36 watts which you're thinking why do you need that much it's because a lot of the server kind of fans and things can run like super high rpm and can pull a lot of wattage so this supports a lot of that plus if you want to go liquid cooled some kind of 
commercial liquid cold solution, you can have 36 watts pulled from the pump header there as well. The pump header will always run 100% speed. The CPU and the CPU optional will share the Q fan control from the BIOS, but the rest of them have individual fan curves you can configure. Moving on, we have a safe boot button and very quickly you start to see We've got some overclocking features on a server motherboard. What's going on? There's a Q LED in here for your error codes. Then we have two eight pin EPS power plugs for your CPU power, 24 pin power for your motherboard, and then another eight pin PCIe power for your PCIe slots and other PCIe power that this board might require. But then you're saying, wait a second, there is a secondary, yes, there's a secondary 24 pin ATX power plug in here. What's going on? Well, yes, this motherboard supports so much stuff, so much PCIe lanes, so much PCIe storage. The CPU can pull so much power that you might run out of uh, PSU power or single PSU power, which means that you might want to connect secondary PSU in here as well. So you've got another 24 pin plus another two uh, CPU power headers for your CPU there. But some of these CPUs run upwards of 500 watts at stock. So if you want to overclock it, yes, overclock that, then you might need the secondary power supply. But there's a few little things here. They recommend you have the same power supply model for both of these if you're gonna go for this, and at least 750 watts each to provide enough supply of to, you know to your components of the motherboard now this is what i've never seen before i've never seen a motherboard that has dual power supply you know plugs basically for this but very quickly understood why they would do that for example i've got the seasonic px 1600 watt power supply in there which is one of the best power supplies that you can get. Okay, you can get the TX 1600 as well, which is a little bit more power efficiency, but we can see that there is up to 16 eight pin PCIe or EPS power connectors, which means that if you're gonna run maybe, let's say three RTX 4090s here, which you can easily do, you can run seven as well if you want to, then that takes already nine connectors. That's the lowest end of the RTX 4090 connectors. You can get also four connectors per RTX 4090, which means you already had 12 connectors. What you're gonna do with your CPU and rest of the things, you run out of connectors very, very quickly. So that's why you might need the secondary power supply. Then we have a power on button, reset button. Then we have this PSU plug to configure and adjust some um, like digital power of the PSU if that supports that. Basically, there's a lot of headers then that you like. I don't know what that does. And if you don't, you probably don't need that. But there's a lot of people who work very high end and use these for like server farms and like bigger, bigger, bigger commercial places where all of these little headers are essential and that's what this motherboard sets it apart. So if you think you can add any helpful information, then please comment down below. I'd love to read your useful comments down below. Then we have an IPMI switch over there. We have a PSU switch one and PSU switch two on the bottom over there. So basically, I'm not exactly sure what does it do, but the two power supplies, you're able to change some of the bus, so depending on the location, how does it work, there's little switches there for there. You've got front panel type A header, which is USB 3.2 Gen 1, which means five gigabits in speed. Front panel USB-C, 10 gigabits in speed. We've got eight SATA ports here. And then the top four here support RAID configurations, the bottom ones not. Then there's another angled six pin PCIe power connector, extra power for your devices. Then there's two connectors over here and these are slim SAS connectors and these support PCIe Gen 4 NVMe storage. Basically, they're extra NVMe storage connectors, but they're not like the, your usual what you see on a PC. They're kind of server grade, which basically means that you can use a cable to connect some of your NVMe storage that looks like maybe 2.5 inch kind of form factor, but it's actually PCIe Gen 4 NVMe storage and because it's server grade you can have much larger than just eight terabytes per you know like your m.2 um you know usual ssd what you see and that you can buy from amazon so basically you can use cables to connect to large nvme storage in there so these are 
Gen 4 X4 um, slots or kind of ports. We've got a front panel header over there. We've got a temperature sensor header over there. Moved on to fan headers. There's two USB 2.0 headers. There is a retry button over here. And here's like a section of overclocking stuff, right? Retry button basically just says, look, try booting again if you are using a liquid, liquid nitrogen and you're very low you know, temperatures and the, the motherboard is trying to struggle to boot in the very, very low temperatures, you can just say retry again instead of you know, resetting the PC because sometimes you render the reset button useless, then this is like forcing the motherboard to kind of just retry it to boot. We have a BMC switch over here. And then on top of that, there is an LN2 kind of a header or LN2 mode which means that they've given you a header to help you cool this CPU with liquid nitrogen. I thought this was a server board, not overclocking board. What are you doing? What's going on over here? This is not like a Threadripper. This is a Xeon and this is Pro Series. Anyway, very interesting, right? We've got the secondary QPSU switch that we talked about already and then a VGA switch. So basically, there is an actual graphics controller on board somewhere one of these things is the VGA's controller and there is a VGA port in the back but that controls the little computer that controls the BIOS and the motherboard because this is a server so basically there's a little computer that controls everything that happens on this motherboard and that's kind of on top of the BIOS right that's called the IPMI where you connect through a LAN port and you can see and control everything either locally or through internet you can control that computer there on the top that controls the BIOS and fan curves and everything else in here like we mentioned on the WRX80 board there so it's slightly different than usual motherboard so you might be going to this motherboard's BIOS and you're like where's the fan curves where's half the stuff in BIOS I can't control half of the stuff it's because you have to access the BMC or IPMI on top that controls all of these hardware on this motherboard. So you can basically turn on and off the onboard graphics if you want to use that one to directly connect to the motherboard and you're not connected to the internet or let's say you can't control things on the management part there. You can just switch that on and off and then boom, you've got graphics here. You don't even need to have graphics uh, included there. It's not going to use the graphics card in there, but another graphics to run that kind of little computer so you can just see the settings and change them. We have another one of those PSU uh, controllers here, PSU SMB two port. So there's one on the top there and then one on the bottom there. We have a DMIP fix. So basically when this port is on and let's say you can't set an IP address for, you know, the management port or like the IPMI of the little computer that controls this motherboard. When switching this port on here, boom, it will give it an IP address of 10.10.10.10. Sometimes you might struggle to, you know, get the IP there, but well, that's that. You've got a TPM header over there. There's a little header over here, and I'm not sure what this is. Then there's an SD card slot over here, where you can put a micro SD card slot to record some of these, you know, logs and things that are happening on the hardware there, if you want to record them locally on the SD card. So this header here is a VPP i2 header is used for the storage backplane with sensor readings i mean you explain that whatever that means we've got some led headers so there's led headers here for lan port so if you want to have the leds in the front of the case like on a server or something like that and you want to see if, how's your lan working you know is it working at one gigabit speeds 10 gigabit speeds is it receiving is it sending data then there's that and then the message led to show kind of another status of there, as well as location LEDs, which means that if you're in a massive server, you've got maybe hundreds of these, you know, laid somewhere in a, in a rack, you can just set the um, command and then it will start flashing the location settings. You can find the server that's got a problem or this motherboard that's got a problem. We've got a Compart front panel audio and some BMC temperature sensor, another temperature sensor there, as well as another fan header in there that we already talked about. Now let's talk about the M.2 slots. There is this big heatsink on there and then this is M.2 PCA 5.0 and underneath here there is a two M.2 slots and both of them are PCA Gen 5 capable. And oh, oh, oh. we've got thermal pads and heatsinks 
on top and on the bottom of both of these slots. These are both X4 slots as well, so you can get full fat Gen 5 speeds, you know, up to, what is it, 14 gigabits per second, something like that, maximum. Sorry, gigabytes per second. 14 gigabytes, that's 14,000 megabytes per second through these slots, something like that. And then there is another one on the bottom here, and that is PCIe Gen 4 slot, X4 slot. So you get full fat Gen 4 speeds. And as you can see, we don't have the thermal heatsink on the bottom, only on the top. Now, if you're running the W24 series, you're gonna lose the Gen 5 or both of these slots become just disappear because you can't use them and you only have one Gen 4 slot here that you can use for your PCA, you know, storage. But if you're using the W3400 series, then you got all of these PCA slots working, Gen 4 and 2 Gen 5 and then voila. And you might be seeing, wait a second, that is another one of these ports in there. And yes, this is for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card that you can just insert in there. You slot it in from that side and then screw it into that screw hole there. And then there was a one tiny screw in the motherboard box, if you remember, and that's what you use the screw for. So this motherboard doesn't come built in with any of the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth capabilities. It's got none of that. Do you remember there was this little um, bracket that came with the motherboard? Basically, what this is for is this is for fan support for your VRM cooling. So this is little bracket that goes on the top over here and then you can screw it in from the sides and have little 40 millimeter fans here on the top. One, two, three fans that blow and cool these VRMs down. That's what this bracket is for. Moving on to the expansion slots. As you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven PCIe 16 or by 16 slots here or like a full size slots. They're all PCIe Gen 5 um, Yes, the CPU has enough PCIe lens to run all of these PCIe Gen 5 if you're running the W3400 series CEO processors. When you run the W24 then every other one will work But there is one little caveat here in terms of PCIe bifurcation the sixth slot over here is only a kind of an X8 slot, so you can have only two X4 kind of lanes there. So if you run loads of PCIe NVMe storage here, then all of these other slots out of the seven can go like four PCIe Gen 4 or PCIe Gen 5 lanes. So you can have four PCIe Gen 5 storage in there, in there, in there. So you can have loads of storage, loads of bandwidth, but then only the sixth slot here is a two PCIe Gen 5 X4 slots. So it's only eight lanes. And nope, there is no switching going on. You can fill them all and you're not gonna lose any other features. Uh... Oh, and last thing, the IO of the motherboard. So in the back here, we have the BIOS Q flash button. So you can update the BIOS by just pressing the button here. If you've got the power connectors without the CPU, without the RAM, boom, you can update the BIOS. If you've got the BIOS install, you know, file plugged into USB and into this port here. Then we have a clear CMOS button, boom, 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 there. We have a management port here, which is a one gigabit port. So that's where you connect your, you know, how you control all of this stuff, what's going on on this PC. Then we have two 10 gigabit LAN connectors or RJ45 connectors, two USB 2.0 headers, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 headers, which are 10 gigabits in speed. Another one of those with USB-C header and then one USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 slot, which is 20 gigabits USB-C in here. That's the VGA header to control the you know, a little computer that's inside this motherboard to control that. If you don't have a separate computer or something like that, you can just directly see uh, what's going on in that here through this VGA port. And then we have audio headers here as well as SPDIF out. Interesting. And that about covers this motherboard. As you can see, this is a lot different than what I have ever seen before. A lot of new things, a lot of new stuff. It's very, very interesting and pretty cool. 
that expensive. If you want to check it out, I'm going to leave this in the description below. But also, if you want to save some cash and don't want to spend absolute ton on a Creator PC, then check out the best bank for buck Creator PC build guides in the description below. There's a video for you, whatever your budget is, I'll explain everything there. How to build it, what you need, what prices, everything's there. Go check it out. Thanks guys for watching. Bye bye. So then, what is this motherboard? This is the Asus Pro. Uh. Wow.